Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So in this uh, particular class, we will look at uh, uh, problems on variable area drugs that involve uh, several concepts uh, together. Uh, they include uh, not only uh, uh, variable area drugs, they include uh, shock waves, uh, maybe oblique shocks, but also an application uh, level problems, um, two of them. Uh, where. Uh, uh, first one is um, in a uh, two dimensional supersonic nozzle is designed to give a uniform flow at Mach 3 with air as flowing fluid. Uh, test gas is supplied from a blow down air supply initially at uh, pressure of uh, 70 into 10 power 5 uh, uh, Newton per meter square. The nozzle exhausts to atmosphere during the operation pressure in supply reservoir decreases. So, you see that here uh, supply pressure decreases. At what supply pressure will oblique shock waves first appear in the exhaust jet? If the test region extending 1 diameter and 10 percent of diameter in height is required in which uh, flow is shock free, then what is the minimum supply pressure for obtaining the desired uh, test region? So, this is an uh, applied problem uh, which is normally uh, used in wind tunnel applications. Uh, the uh, good thing with uh, supersonic flows uh, is that uh, uh, the because there is a um, kind of uh, uh, information propagation in supersonic flows is um, limited. Uh, so, uh, the flow if it is uniform at the exit, uh, the flow is uniform at the exit, then if any changes happen downstream, they will not be uh, affecting the flow until uh, certain waves actually pass through the flow. So, for uh, example, for uh, until a wave for if uh, there are no shock waves, then uh, the corresponding wave is a Mach wave which is a weak shock. So, the Mach wave for this uh, particular for this particular Mach number may proceed for in along these directions let us take them to be symmetrical. So, in this particular triangle you can see that they form a kind of uh, triangle uh, the, ma the Mach number and flow properties will remain uniform so and the flow will not get affected by any changes. Any changes that happen over here in this region will not affect uh, this region. This is a, mm, a nice uh, a thing about supersonic flows and uh, testing in supersonic flows. So, you can have a model inside here of a certain dimensions which are of this kind um, of this nature and it will be in uniform flow. So, this is what this problem is uh, uh, looking at, uh, but what it says is now this wave is an oblique shock is given clearly that it is an oblique shock and uh, it says that the oblique shocks should uh, uh, the limitation of the oblique shock should be such that uh, uh, this is always within the uniform flow where the diameter that is given is about 10 percent the uh, uh, diameter. So, this is the diameter of the exit. So, this is if I say this is d by 2. So, here you have 10 percent of uh, d by 2 0 0.1 d by 2 is the height which is symmetric over here. So, the oblique shock should at least touch this at this particular point. So, uh, this is what is given. So, it is a kind of uh, uh, application in wind tunnel uh, operation and a model in a wind tunnel. Um, so, how do we find this 
um, these kind of conditions. Before that, uh, so uh, the way this uh, wind tunnel is operated is that uh, initially 17 to 10 power 5 uh, Newton per meter square of pressure is given and uh, it exhausts uh, through the um, nozzle and onto the model, but then the supply pressure is continuously decreasing. So, uh, what we are interested in these kind of uh, testing is Mach number. Uh, so, as long as the Mach number uh, remains uh, constant, uh, we expect um, uh, certain flow features like shock waves around the body to remain uh, the same, but obviously if uh, stagnation pressure decreases, exit pressure will also decrease. So, this has to be borne in mind, but uh, pressure ratios will not change because pressure ratios will depend only on Mach number. If the nozzle is operating in design condition and uh, Mach number is maintained, then uh, ratios of pressure will be uh, maintained absolute values are changing because upstream pressure is changing. So, uh, that is something that needs to be uh, understood. So, uh, first question is what supply pressure will oblique shock waves first appear in the exhaust jet, okay, first uh, appear in the uh, exhaust jet. So, uh, that is uh, at the point. Uh, if the pressure drops below just below uh, the correct operating pressure of the nozzle, uh, then um, oblique shocks will appear a slightly over expanded uh, operation. So, the correct uh, operating pressure will decide um, the, uh, 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 the required stagnation pressure for uh, uh, this point. And uh, uh, what is known is that uh, this nozzle is just exhausting to atmosphere. So, uh, at the exhaust jet, so it is just uh, uh, going out to atmosphere. So, here it is P atmosphere and we are finding out this particular region in which uh, the flow is going to be uniform, more or less uniform. So, uh, uh, we know that uh, what is the Mach number is 3, so Mach number of the nozzle is 3, so M e is 3.0. Uh, for this uh, and uh, pressure uh, at the back pressure is, pressure at exit is a 1 atmosphere. So, at exactly at the condition when the pressure at exit it becomes equal to back pressure equal to 1 atmosphere, that is the correct operating uh, optimum operating point of the nozzle. If the pressure uh, stagnation pre pressure reduces beyond this particular point, uh, then oblique shocks will appear. So, the correct operating pressure is uh, stagnation pressure is uh, given by P e by P naught for uh, so P e by P naught for Mach 3 is 0 0.02722. So, P naught is uh, 101.325 10 power 3 divided by 0 0.02722 which is 37.22 to 10 power 5 uh, pascals. So, uh, if the pressure drops below 37.22 into 10 power 5 pascals, then uh, oblique shocks will occur. But already we know that uh, this wind tunnel starts operating with uh, 70 uh, into 10 power 5 pascals. So, uh, this is nearly half of that. So, there is a long time to go before um, we get to this 37.22 in 10 power 5 uh, pascal. So, if it falls below this value, then oblique shocks will occur. Next uh, question here is that. Uh, this is the exit of the nozzle. So, uh, let us take it symmetric and this is d by 2. Okay, So, this is d by 2 and uh, 10 percent of or 0.5 d. Uh, 
10 percent of uh, d is so you are having a model here the dimensions of the model are that length is uh, 10 uh, sorry 1 diameter so 1 d and the height that this model can take is 10 percent. So, this is uh, 0 0.05 d 0 0.5 d okay. and this is 0 0.5 d 0 0.5 d. So, this height here is 0 0.45 d. Now, if an oblique shock is formed then if it just touches graces the model the end of the model the edge of the model that is the limiting condition. Then the entire model will still be in a uh, uniform flow of m equal to uh, 3.0. Only after the oblique shock passes the flow turns towards and there is uh, it becomes a different flow. So, if you are testing for Mach 3 then there is this much amount of uh, space available to do the uh, testing. So, uh, question is what is the uh, condition at which this uh, particular uh, condition is achieved. So, now we know uh, this is an oblique shock and uh, the geometry of the oblique shock is given. So, this is 0 0.45 and this angle is beta for the oblique shock. So, beta tan beta is um, 0 0.45 by 1 which is 0 0.45. So, beta is 24.22 degrees. Now, corresponding theta can be found out because Mach number is upstream Mach number is 3 m is equal to 3.0. So, uh, theta is uh, 6.347 degrees. Okay. So, now we know m beta theta. So, we can find m and 1 which is uh, uh, 1.23, 1.23. So uh, once you know m and 1, uh, the pressure here is 1 atmosphere now after the oblique shock. So we need to find pressure in this region. This is P1. So uh, P1 we have to find. P2 is P2 is 1 atmosphere. So P2 by P1 is uh, 1.598. Uh, therefore, P1 is P2 by 1.598, which is 1 by 1.598, okay, uh, which is or 1 1013.325 into 10 power 5, uh, 10 power 3, so which is equal to 0 0.63 into 10 power 5 pascals, okay. So, that is the pressure in uh, this uniform region. Uh, now, Mach number is 3. So, Mach number is still 3. Mach number is 3.0. So, we can find P0 corresponding to this particular pressure. Uh, this because P e by P0 is known. So, this will be 0 0.63 into 10 power 5 divided by 0 0.02722 which is uh, 23.14 into 10 power 5 Newton per meter square. So, uh, this uh, had uh, two concepts here uh, involved. One is um, that unlike uh, previous cases where we had stagnation pressure as constant and changes were done to back pressure, here back pressure is maintained constant. Uh, at one atmosphere and changes is done to uh, stagnation pressure and we were interested in when does the nozzle just go to over expanded regime. But uh, in the over expanded regime we are still interested in a particular point up to which the oblique shock uh, will just grace the surface of a model which is placed in front of the uh, nozzle. Uh, as it just expands into the uh, atmosphere. So, all the region from the exit of the nozzle till that particular point is a uniform flow region which can be used for uh, testing and the corresponding pressure at which this particular condition is achieved is what we were uh, looking at. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, 
involved uh, multiple such concepts and geometry derived from the geometry of model uh, and the condition that oblique shock will hit at a particular uh, location. So, next uh, we will look at uh, another example. Mm, so, here uh, there is an in draft uh, supersonic wind tunnel, uh, it needs to be constructed uh, as shown in figure. So, in draft means uh, you are uh, taking the air from ambient atmosphere and then pulling it into a vacuum tank, uh, passing through a uh, conversion divergent nozzle into vacuum tank. A test run is started with a pressure of 0 kilo Pascal in the tank. Uh, that means, uh, vacuum levels are very high. So, pressure is very, very small compared to the atmosphere. Hence, it is taken as uh, 0 kilo Pascal. Mm, how long can uniform flow conditions be maintained in test section? So, the implication here is, uh, uh, so the moment, so already a very large pressure differential is produced across the, uh, between the test section and through a nozzle. So, uh, the moment uh, let us say there was a valve here and the moment the valve is opened uh, immediately uh, the nozzle chokes because the pressure ratio is very high um, and it will choke and give the desired conditions. But what happens uh, the pressure in the vacuum tank uh, will now start increasing earlier it was very very low vacuum and it starts increasing. So, back pressure is now increasing. But uh, P naught is held constant here. So, uh, initially there is a supersonic flow and then uh, pressure in the vacuum tank will keep increasing. At a certain pressure, uh, shock will start appearing at this point, at the point at the end of the test section and then start moving. So, once this uh, shock appears here, essentially beyond that point, Mm, uh, flow in the test section is going to be get uh, disturbed as this shock passes over. So, uh, the test time uh, or for the duration of test for which uh, the, uh, pr uh, the uniform flow can be maintained here is the time from for the pressures in the vacuum tank to rise uh, from very low values to the particular back pressure at which this uh, uh, condition is met. Okay. Uh, so, uh, assume test section is circular with diameter of 0.1 meter and uh, design Mach number is uh, 2.4. So, this is 2.4 and test section diameter is given 0.1 T is 0.1 and vacuum tank has volume 3 meter cube. So, volume of vacuum tank is 3 meter cube and atmospheric conditions is given 101 kilo Pascal and T is 20 degree centigrade. Uh, assume that air be brought to rest adiabatically into the tank. So, here uh, air is brought to rest adiabatically that means there is no change in stagnation temperature T naught remains constant remains constant. Okay. What will be the duration of uniform flow if uh, that is, so, there, there is an uh, uh, additional question that if instead of a straight duct that is shown over here a diffuser divergent diffuser of area ratio 2 is to 1 is added between test section and tank what is the uh, uh, change that it makes to the uh, uh, test time. So, here uh, the question is that you already have. so. Uh, Let us take the case 1, uh, where uh, you have the duct and you have the nozzle and a long duct uh, which is the test section. At the exit of the test section there should be a uh, normal shock. Okay. So, initially at starting uh, very, very low pressures. So, mass inside the tank can be taken to be 0. So, m dot inside the at start uh, t equal to 0 m dot uh, or m mass inside the tank uh, is 0. Uh, then as air is pushed into it uh, m will increase. Uh, the moment it is started there is a large pressure difference p naught is constant. So, um, and the flow is choked. 
So, that means m dot that is uh, uh, mass flow rate through the uh, test section is a constant is a constant. So, these are some things that uh, have to uh, register once you look at this problem. M dot is a constant, it will continue to be a constant as long as the normal shock does not come and completely disturb the flow. So, uh, that is the idea here. So, how much mass needs to be added to the tank so that uh, the back pressure rises to a certain uh, level. Uh, the volume of the tank is constant, V is 3 meter cube. So, this is something that is useful, okay. we can look at this um, thing. Uh, so, um, what is that particular condition uh, at which uh, uh, the, the back pressure the um, there is a shock at the uh, test section this is what we need to know. So, m is uh, 2.4 from normal shock relations we know what is p 2 by p 1 is 6.5533 what we require is p 2 by p 0 1 p 2 by p 0 1 this is uh, uh, p 2 by p 1 multiplied by p 1 by p 0 1 for uh, Mach 2.4 uh, p 1 by p 0 1 is known uh, 0 0.06839. So, this is um, 6.5335533 multiplied by 0 0.06839. So, from here we get p 2 is uh, 45.272 kilo Pascal. So, that means, uh, the vacuum tank pressure should increase back pressure that is getting applied on this uh, section should increase to 45.272 kilo Pascal. Uh, then, uh, this tunnel will start uh, having non-uniform flows. So, how do we look at uh, that problem? Uh, we find out what is the mass uh, of uh, mass that gets accumulated inside the vacuum tank because volume is known and the temperature we know that uh, uh, it goes to rest adiabatically. So, temperature here will be T naught, okay. volume is known and the pressure is now known, back pressure is known P B. Uh, 45.272 kilo Pascal, 272 kilo Pascal. So, uh, the total mass that would give this particular uh, uh, value is uh, rho multiplied by volume, density is P by R T naught that P back by R T naught multiplied by volume. This is 45.2 uh, 7 2 10 power 3 divided by 287 T naught is 293 Kelvin multiplied by 3 meter cube. So, this mass uh, turns out to be 1.6151 kilograms. Okay. Now, uh, how to get time? How do we get time when this is achieved? If we can divide this mass by the mass flow rate that is flowing through the wind tunnel will get time. Uh, so, what is mass flow rate to the wind tunnel? This is rho V A. Uh, so, uh, that is uh, because from the start the nozzle is choked. So, m dot is constant. So, rho V A. Uh, so, here uh, area of the wind tunnel is given uh, diameter is pi by 4 into 0 0.1 square is the area of test section area of test section okay. that is 7.854 into 10 power minus 3 meter square and uh, velocity is ma uh, Mach number multiplied by A mm, this is speed of sound and here we need to find temperature pressure and temperature uh, this is 2.4 uh, so you have P 1 is P naught multiplied by P 1 by P naught which is uh, atmospheric pressure. So, 101 0 1 uh, multiplied by uh, 0 0.06839 
this is 6.9 kilo Pascal and T1 is uh, 293 multiplied by 0 0.4646 that is 136.1278 kilo Pascal uh, Kelvin. So, density can be found and then uh, velocity is 2.4 multiplied by square root of 1.4287 uh, 136.1278. So, you can get this uh, velocity. Mm. So, uh, multiplying all rho V A you get mass flow rate as mm, 0 0.7785 kilogram per second. So, time is uh, total mass that needs to be achieved 1.6151 divided by 0 0.7785 which is uh, 2.0746 kilogram per second. Okay. So, there are certain uh, simplifying assumptions uh, assumed here, but this is a very good estimate uh, sorry 2.0 seconds very good estimate about 2 seconds of uh, test time. Now, why this comparison is done is what is the uh, use of having a diffuser. If you have a, a diffuser of this kind, there is just a diverging diffuser is placed uh, there, how will it affect um, this test time. So, there is a diffuser at this portion you have a normal shock now at the exit of uh, the test section just the same case as before, but now there is a diffuser attached. Okay. The diffuser allows further pressure recovery. That means, the pressure at which this particular condition uh, is now achieved uh, for uh, uh, having a uh, uh, normal shock at the test section is uh, slightly different from the earlier case. Okay. So, if we do the calculation for that the area ratio of the diffuser is given A e by A 1 is uh, 2 and Mach number is 1.4 uh, sorry Mach number is 2.4 M exit 2.4. Okay. So, uh, uh, now you can use uh, the normal shock relations in from normal shock you know P 0 2. So, this is 2 this is 1. Uh, P02 by P01 is 0 0.5401. Mm, so uh, A1 star by A2 star is A2 star is 0 0.5401. Now, uh, as a consequence, now the exit now is here A E. So, we need uh, A e by A 2 star is A e by A 1 multiplied by A 1 by A 1 star multiplied by A 1 star by A 2 star. This is uh, 2 A e by A 1 multiplied by 2.4031 multiplied by 0 0.5401 this is 2.5958. So, we get uh, what is the Mach number at this exit, we know this uh, exit Mach number M e is uh, 0 0.23. So, P e by P 0 e at this particular point P e by P 0 e is known e is 0 0.9638. We need P e by uh, so now what is uh, the PE we should find out this P01 is known it is 101 kilo Pascal. So, uh, PE will be um, PE by P02 which is same as P0E multiplied by P02 by P01 multiplied by P01. The, all these values are known P02 by P01 PE by P02 is known here and P01 is known. If this is done, it is 52.574 kilopascal. So, 
uh, the pressure at which this is achieved is much higher uh, than the previous pressure which was for 45.272 kilo Pascal. Uh, as a consequence uh, the uh, pressure in the tank that needs here that back pressure is higher is higher and uh, you can find the mass that uh, in the tank at that particular time m tank uh, is now 52.574 10 power 3 divided by uh, 287 into 293 uh, multiplied by 3 meter cube pressure this is 1.81566 kilograms. So, now time is um, m by m dot m dot does not change because p 0 1 is constant and here you get time is 2.409 seconds. So, uh, because of the addition of a diffuser which can recover uh, pressure uh, it is possible to increase the test time from the earlier 2 seconds to now close to uh, 2.4 seconds. So, diffusers help recover pressure and they help reduce energy for uh, operating such uh, facilities. So, with this uh, uh, we have covered extensively on varying area ducts, nozzles, diffusers their applications in various uh, engineering devices, inlets, intakes and uh, supersonic wind tunnels. So, uh, this essentially uh, covers uh, the majority uh, of uh, variable area varying area duct problems. In actuaring actual uh, engineering devices, uh, uh, there is uh, additional efficiency that is con considered for these uh, devices. Nozzles. Uh, operate at uh, very high efficiencies because they have a favorable pressure gradient, but diffusers uh, because they have uh, adverse pressure gradients and uh, there are issues with boundary layers in adverse pressure gradient uh, problems. Uh, they have lower um, efficiencies compared to uh, nozzles, uh, but uh, the ideal principles have been discussed uh, thoroughly here, various operating conditions and uh, ways to calculate those operating conditions for both nozzles and diffusers and the facts that in diffuser the uh, most important problem is starting of diffusers. If you do not design for starting then diffuser will never start uh, that is the main uh, issue in diffusers. Uh, so, uh, with this from next class we will go on to uh, uh, the forcing now we move from uh, varying areas to having a friction inside the ducts. Uh, so, area is maintained constant, but uh, friction is introduced into the duct and when then we see what happens to compressible flow in such ducts uh, that is a, a particular kind of problem known as fano flow. And uh, further we will move to uh, another problem where uh, you can have only heat addition which is termed as rally flow and uh, we will just have a, a small class on how to see if there are combined effects of all these uh, area area change and friction and the heat addition. So, that covers majority of uh, the class of flows and uh, gives good mathematical models to do uh, uh, simple designs of uh, engineering devices, uh, but to know complete details of flow we need to work with the uh, differential equations uh, which will be covered further on ok. Uh, with that uh, uh, thank you.